Valessa and I are doing a massive toy giveaway. More on that later. All righty. Well, hello, sinners. How are you? On today's installment of the Letterboard of Truth, our quote of the day is... Can you handle it? Because uh, we'll be talking about mugs today. That's right. Mugs. You know, Demi Lovato's favorite dish. My favorite dish... I like mugs. I know Stanley tumblers have been the talk of the town over the past few weeks, really the past year. I never understood the hype for them in the first place. It's an insulated water bottle. Okay, and they're a dime a dozen at this rate. If you've managed to buy into the hype over a water bottle, respectfully, you're a sheep. <coughs> Sorry, I've been fighting the nastiest head cold over the past few days, and I'm still a bit congested. Mm. Anyway, Stanley Cups are a thing of the past. What we really should be talking about now is mugs, and more specifically, the strawberry mug that's got TikTok riled up. And you know me, I love my niche drama. Unbeknownst to many of you, Pottery talk has been in shambles over this mug. A she said, she said situation turned into a whole debate about small businesses and how much artists should really charge for their work. We have a latte to cover in this video, so we might as well get into it. Cause like, mugs. <laughs> Ever heard of them? But before I spill the tea on the notorious strawberry mug, I have a word from today's sponsor, Balesa. Balesa is a bi women company for all things sexual wellness. Their mission is to empower everyone to embrace, explore, and celebrate their sexuality. Like Balesa, I also think everyone deserves to explore their sexuality in a way that makes them feel comfortable and happy, which is why I've been working with Balesa for as long as I have. Since Balesa and I are doing a giveaway together, I'm gonna take you through some of my favorite toys. There's five in total and I'm sure by the end of it you'll see something that interests you. First up is the Pebble. She's cute, she's barbie coated, she is everything. The Pebble fits perfectly in the palm of your hand. Best of all, the suction and vibration can be controlled independently as opposed to those annoying pattern modes. Next is the Air Vibe. The Air Vibe is designed for dual stimulation. It's rechargeable, waterproof, and comes in discrete casing. Following right behind the Air Vibe is the Demi Wand. Now, it's not a magic wand, but it is magical in the sense that it works with all body types because we all deserve Deserve to feel good. The Demi Wand has a flexible neck to get just the angle or pressure you're looking for. It's quiet, compact, discreet, waterproof, and it also comes with an adorable charging case. This next toy is no joke, and you'll see what I mean. May I present to you the Thrust. The Thrust is a powerful, realistic thrusting vibrator that stimulates the G-spot. The Thrust has five insertable inches and a ring of swirling beads at the base of the shaft. And of course it's rechargeable and waterproof. And last but certainly not least, we have the Swiss Army Knife of Vibrators, as I like to call it, the Thump. It's a toy that does it all. It vibrates, it suctions, and you guessed it, it thumps. The thump utilizes Balesa's improved pleasure jet technology with true feel vibrations that naturally complement the suction at its targeted base. It also has innovative thump technology for natural clitoral palpitations on the back of the pop grip. As you just saw, Balesa has a little something for everyone, which is why I'm so excited to announce that Balesa and I are sending out free vibrators. That's right, free vibrators and free gift cards for vibrators to everyone who signs up to my giveaway. So really, what do you have to lose? So make sure you go to the link at the top of the description to secure your free toy or free gift card while also supporting the channel. So thanks so much for that. Thank you to Balesa for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to your scheduled programming. Before we discuss the events from this week, the story actually begins in December. 
A few days before Christmas, Australian fashion and lifestyle influencer Sofa Dofa uploaded a seven and a half minute TikTok showing various items she's gifting her loved ones for Christmas. About halfway through, Soph took out a double handled strawberry mug and explained that she had no idea who she was going to give it to. This, I actually have no idea who I'm going to give this to. Basically, I was at this market, the finder keep, finders keepers market. How can you use this cup, right? I think it's actually like a kid sippy cup, which is silly because it's ceramic, so if they drop it, it'll smash. At the time, Soph didn't realize what its price was until she was being rung up. Before it just had one handle, I was like, oh, that's such a cute mug. Like, I'm just going to get it. Like, I was like, whatever, like, I'll just get it. Didn't ask how much it was. She's like, yep, that's all good. You can tap. It's 100. She's like, oh, no, she's like, it's all good. You can tap. Can you look at the f -boss machine? $125. Look how small this mug is. Like, it's literally tiny. That's like a proper mug size. Yep. You heard that right. The now infamous strawberry mug is 125 Australian dollars. It's actually 130 Australian dollars on the shop's website, so technically, Soph got a deal. For all my red-blooded American sinners watching, that equates to about 81 US dollars, which don't get me wrong, is still a lot for a mug, let alone a mug that only holds six fluid ounces. The most I've ever paid for a mug is around $25, and it's also a handmade mug I got at a craft fair. I'd say it was worth it. Soph wrapped up this portion of our haul by saying that she would have felt bad about ending the transaction at this point, so she just bought the mug. She like fully wrapped it and put it in a bag and like I was about to tap. So I was like, there's no way I can be like, no, I could have, but I would have felt really bad. So I just got it, but now I'm like, can I give this to I'm not gonna give this to actually one of my cousins that's small because they'll just break it. It's so breakable. It's like hand ceramic, hand ceramic, you know? So I don't know who the that's for. We'll figure it out. From what I could tell, this TikTok didn't circulate outside of Soph's audience when it was initially posted. The comments from the day or so after this was uploaded were things like, I love your hair, where'd you get your jewelry, you know? Typical comments you'd expect under an influencer's post. Almost none of her followers acknowledged the strawberry mug. And remember, it was featured for one minute out of this seven and a half minute video posted on December 22nd, 2023. Not even in this calendar year. But just over a month later, the shop owner Shelby Sherritt came out and addressed Soph's video on her TikTok page. For context, Shelby is an Australian artist and popular content creator who makes a variety of ceramic pieces. She began by thanking Soph for supporting her small business in a tone that may or may not have been sarcastic. Then she explained the design process and the reason behind her prices. Every single time someone purchases a piece that I make, I have literally spent hours and hours finessing, glazing. I hand paint every single one. And that's not including how much money goes towards tax, how much goes towards GST, how much outgoings I have, all my supplies that have also increased in value. It also includes my staff's wages. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for artists getting paid. If anything, artists deserve to be paid more. And I understand that pursuing art, whether as a hobby or a career, is expensive. Not to mention the amount of time and effort it takes to create a piece you're proud of. Plus, we need to remember that Shelby runs a business and her prices reflect the cost of keeping her business afloat. Whether or not you think those prices are fair is a different thing and we'll get into that. However, as we move forward, you'll see why Shelby started to fall out of favor with me and a lot of other people. Also deeply upsetting to have someone not only question you as a business owner and lie about how I interacted with you, but to also have you question my pricing when you too also run a small business and you know how much goes into every single little thing that small business does. This part had me confused because I didn't think Soph was questioning Shelby's business practices at all. I didn't get any malicious vibes from Soph's initial TikTok. For my interpretation, Soph was more surprised that she wound up spending a hundred something Australian dollars on a tiny strawberry mug. I totally understand the sentiment of being too shy to say no, I changed my mind and instead bought the thing you didn't intend on buying because you feel like it's too late and you don't want to hurt their feelings. I've definitely done it before because 
I'm just so shy. Woo! And to address Shelby's last point, I probably should have mentioned before that Soph is also a small business owner. She founded a clothing line dedicated to her great great grandmother last summer. But I don't know why Shelby brought that up. Like, yeah. I'm sure Soph is aware of the costs required to run a small business, but again, she never bashed your company. I, I simply don't understand where Shelby's coming from. The thing that's also upsetting is that you came to the Finders Keepers Market, and do you know what? We were all so excited. Even the market organizers were so excited that you came to the market, and you were potentially going to shout out this wonderful event that supports small, local, creative businesses. When I spoke to you, I actually recognized you because you'd just been nominated for a TikTok award, and I said, hey, how awesome. Congratulations on your TikTok award. Here's the thing. Soph never mentioned the shop by name. She said where she got the mug, the Finders Keepers Market, but not the vendor she bought it from. Granted, you could easily Google the Finders Keepers Market and put two and two together. If you're a fan of Shelby, then maybe you would have recognized the strawberry mug. But if Shelby never came out and made this TikTok, the general public would have never known who Soph was talking about. And again, Soph never badmouthed Shelby's business. She even said the mug was cute, cause it is. I then explained to you, like I explained to every single person that came to my stall over that weekend, that all the prices were placed on the bottom and you can pick up, handle, you don't have to purchase anything. You can just enjoy my stall because I get it. Times are tough right now. I don't want to put you in a financial situation. I want to have a living wage and I want to support my workers here. I want to be able to continue doing this and doing it for a very long time. Then Shelby alleged that Soph picked up multiple items and looked at the prices. And after Soph picked out the strawberry mug, Shelby supposedly asked how she would like it wrapped and that she never would have continued if she knew Soph was hesitant about the purchase. I watched you pick things up and look at the prices. You picked up a number of pieces of that strawberry collection because it's freaking cute. It's so cute. And then I showed you other pieces that I had left because they were so popular, I barely had any of them left. And I showed you and I even told you the price of them. After that, you handed me the mug that you were going to go and I was like, awesome pick. And I asked you, like I asked everyone that weekend, whether you would like tissue paper or a bit more padding because I wanted to make sure that the piece was safe wherever they were traveling to that day. And I didn't wrap it until I had an answer. And I, then I gave you the FPOS machine to tap your card. It was literally your choice. And I wouldn't have wrapped it until I knew that you had, you had responded that you wanted that piece. I wasn't there, so I can't say what truly happened. This is why I describe this as a she said she said situation at the very beginning. Shelby concluded by saying that Soph can return the mug if she really wants to so that it could go to someone who would really love and appreciate that mug. In particular that mug is really special because it may look like just a sippy cup to you but it actually falls under the dignity mug category where it has a double handle to help people that have different needs and different disabilities that require to handle mugs to handle their cup. Anyway, thank you um, for supporting my business regardless uh, and thank you to anyone that's bought one of my pieces. It, um, it means the world to me, so thank you. As you can imagine, Shelby got a lot of backlash some of it unwarranted, and she's deleted her video since. Fans started calling this scandal Muggate as it's been unraveling. We really need to start asking ourselves if everything needs discourse. Then again, I am making this video, so... Anyway, let's go through some of the feedback Shelby received. Overall, the majority of viewers agreed that she should not have responded to Soph, and I don't think she should have either. With all the peace and love in the world to Shelby, it could have been a diary entry. Sorry. No one would have known it was your mug if you didn't open your trap. A great point I came across is that since Shelby made the double-handled mug for accessibility purposes, then it should be sold at an accessible price, and I think that's valid. Not saying there aren't disabled people out there who can afford it, but given how poorly the American healthcare system at least takes care of the disabled population, Buying a mug that pricey is probably out of the question for many of those in Shelby's target audience. Even for the average able-bodied person, the 125 Australian dollar slash 81 US dollar price tag is steep. 
We're living in a time where folks are struggling to put food on the table, and the idea of spending that much on a mug of all things is ludicrous. But the criticism turned into direct personal attacks at Shelby regarding her as a business owner and even as an artist, and I don't think that's okay either. For example, I saw some claiming that Shelby can't consider herself a small business because she has 2 million TikTok followers. And I'd like to point out that having 2 million followers doesn't mean she has 2 million customers. Also, her small business status would be determined by how many people she's employed, not her sales or her TikTok following, for that matter. In addition, several viewers argued that Shelby's pieces aren't handmade because she uses molds. This is the $125 mug. And you're telling me that she didn't even make it out of clay? She poured it into a mold? Did she make the mold? So basically, she just painted it and glazed it because I, that, I could do that. That color be mine. The amount of people defending her and saying that I don't understand how much work she puts into this, apparently you don't either because she's pouring them. And I'm not saying that doesn't take any kind of skill, but to charge $125 for a cup that all you did was paint? Crazy. If you are still defending this girl charging that, you're a clown. Like, I'm sorry. I feel bad for you, actually, because you must be getting ripped off all the time. In pottery, this is a process called slip casting, where you pour partially liquefied clay into a plaster mold. You can see Shelby utilizing this technique in past TikToks. While this allows Shelby to mass produce her pieces, that doesn't negate the work she puts in to smooth the clay, paint it, fire it in the kiln, and glaze it. She doesn't hide this fact either. If you go to the FAQ section of her website, she explains the whole process. From what I saw, some people lost the plot once they began discounting Shelby's artistic skills. Like, come on, let's circle back to the real issue, people. Amidst all this, Soph posted a follow-up in response to the sudden discourse over her itsy bitsy teeny weeny strawberry mug. The video started with Soph describing how she was being accused of slandering a small business and she wanted to clear the air and share how things went down from her perspective. This is my experience. I remember going to the Fire Keepers Market, looking at this store and being like, this is so cute. I woke up, there was like a little like, um, like barricade thing you had to like line up because the store was really popular. So I stood in the line, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited a while, got to the front and I just wanted to have a look at some things. On my mom's life, I did not touch any items. I looked at all the items and I remember talking to a girl who had long dark brunette hair. Maybe I'm wrong, but I swear I remember having long dark brunette hair. And I remember seeing the mug and thinking it was really cute. When I looked at the mug, I couldn't see it had two handles. I wouldn't have bought it, but I thought it had one handle. That last part about seeing the handle or not was highly debated among viewers as well. But if you look at this video posted by the Finders Keepers Markets Instagram, you can see that same strawberry mug displayed in front and how the second handle sort of blends in with the object next to it. So I believe Soph when she said that she couldn't tell it had a second handle. You don't like Harriet the fucking spy over here, I'll tell you that for free. According to Soph, her transaction at the market did not happen the way Shelby said it did. I see the mug, I think it's really cute. I thought I had one handle and I was like, oh, I'll get that, right? I didn't realize, I didn't know the price until I typed my card. I saw that it said $125 and I thought, in my personal opinion, I thought, whoa, oh, I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug. Not saying that the price, I never said anything in the video that the price wasn't worth that, that it was not deserving of that price, like the piece wasn't worth that price. Never said anything. It was a little comment about how I didn't know it was that much money until I typed my card. Still bought it. Didn't even know it had two handles because I didn't see it. Like I just saw it from an angle where I obviously thought it had one handle. She is now making this video saying that I was picking it up. I looked at the price on the bottom. I looked at the price of a few things. She's telling me that she talked me through the price and that she talked me through the whole strawberry collection. This did not happen. I don't know why people feel like they can make videos saying my name and just throwing absolute lies in there to get views. So finished her response by saying that this was all blown out of proportion and she's sick of people dragging her name through the mud. Lucky for Soph though, most users were on her side. All this over a little mug. Welcome to 2024, everyone. Despite how poorly she handled the mug debacle, I do think Shelby's very talented. Wow, I got two mug puns in that sentence. I, I kind of popped off. What it all comes down to is the fact that art is subjective. We could both look at Shelby's work and form two different opinions about it. For example, I think her stuff is cute. It's giving springtime. Meanwhile, others would say that it's giving color me mine. And you know what? 
both opinions can exist because once you put something out into the world, it's no longer yours. I'm not a potter, but I have a degree in photography and I took a lot of art courses in college because of that. So I understand how easy it is to take any critique of your work personally. Because let me tell you, there's nothing more humbling than having a professor rip into your artwork in front of the whole class. It's the same with YouTube. Once I upload this video, I am opening myself up to criticism, and that's just par for the course. I can't stop it. In Shelby's case, by putting her pieces up for sale, she's opening herself to criticism, not just from an artistic standpoint, but also from a monetary standpoint. When people visit her website or go to her stall at a crafts festival, they're gonna ask themselves, is this strawberry mug worth 125 Australian dollars? To some, the answer is yes. Maybe because they love the design, maybe because they're a huge Shelby fan, maybe both, maybe none, who knows. But as we learned, many folks don't see how this strawberry mug is worth 125 Australian dollars. Me personally, if I were to spend 80 of my American Patriot dollars on a mug, it better be wrapped in solid gold and hand thrown by Dolly Parton herself. That's just me though. Even though I and countless others disagree with the pricing, clearly there's a market for Shelby's work because everything's sold out on her website. So get your bag, girly. At the end of the day, Shelby is allowed to price her art as she sees fit. But as consumers, we're allowed to pick and choose how we spend our money because why? It's, it's subjective. subjective. Very good class. As of the week after all this went down, it appears that it's business as usual for both Soph and Shelby. Hopefully Soph's video marked the end of this very strange and silly online feud because drinkware should not be igniting this much discourse. It's simply not that serious. And you know what? I'll leave it at that. One more thing, please don't go and harass anyone involved. Neither of them are bad people, and I'm sure Shelby's gotten enough for her part in this weird misunderstanding. So let's keep the discussion in the comments. Is the strawberry mug worth 80 US dollars to you? Let me know what you think of Muggate down below. If there's any other niche TikTok drama you'd like me to talk about going forward, let me know down below. And in general, if there's any topic you want me to discuss on my channel, I have a Google form linked in the description where you could submit your video ideas. Thank you so much to Belessa for sponsoring today's video. And thank you, the sinners at home, for watching today's video. I love you guys and I'll see you soon with a brand new video. Bye.